Good morning, Chicago and the rest of the world. Welcome to the Money, Sex, Gen X podcast. My name is Eric McLeod. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Hello. One, two. This is Eric McLeod. All right. Maybe the echo is gone. Mic check. One, two. Okay. All right. Let's start over. Well, bring a little energy, E Money. That's a little low for you. No, I'm good, brother. Uh, I heard that echo, so it made me stop. Okay. All right, let's go. All right, my name is Eric McLeod. Welcome to the Money, Sex, Gen X podcast. We are broadcasting out of Chicago, Illinois. Uh, we are on season seven. I got my co-host here, Scott Stewart, a.k.a. Big Stu. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's happening, E-Money? Hey, man, I'm just uh, ready to have this really good conversation today about business plan development, something yeah. that you and I both hold near and dear to our yeah. hearts. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're going to flesh it out. So the, the title of this episode is, Do You Need a Business Plan? This is season seven, episode four, I believe. Seven, four. Seven four. That's a that's a that's a gang that's gang language in Chicago, man. Okay, I gotta be careful with that then. Seven four. That's G D. Okay, well let we, me we, clarify we, we, that. We, it's all good to all nations out there. To all yes, nations. sir. Yes, sir. Let me clean <laughs> that up. So we are on season seven, episode four of the Money <laughs> Sex Gen X podcast. Indeed. And yeah, we are, we're now in 60 countries, Stu, I'm happy wow. to say, we're being streamed in 60 countries, and we're right there on the cusp of being in 500 cities globally. Come on, y'all, come on, shout out to everybody that's showing us love, man. Yeah, we appreciate it, and it's really Absolutely. nice to have our voice out there on these different topics. So let's jump into today's topic, and we always like to talk about why the topic is important to us. And I'll mm -hmm. just start off by saying one in five businesses fail in the first year. That's what they say. That's 20%. Um, 20%. Some of the main reasons are not properly researching the market, not having enough financing, poor marketing, which we know is also always a big problem for many people, Under not understanding key trends, and Stu, sometimes just not having the right people on the team. Okay. Okay. What are your thoughts about why? And you, you're the one who wanted to do this topic. I had been thinking yeah. about it, but you brought it back up. Why is this such an important topic? I, I think it's the it's the sign of the times. We're in a place, we're in a space where it's all about go, 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 go. Now, 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 results, results, results. Make money, make money, make money. But I think one of the things that we're missing is the patience factor and, and, and the planning component. Like there is a reason that you plan. So I think you could be more efficient and effective with planning, but I don't think you can skip over or minimize what is required to plan properly for successful, profitable businesses. Mm, okay. You know, and another piece, you know, I, when I look at some of these television commercials, I am reminded about how much time goes into curating those commercials to get results. And these things don't happen in a one hour Zoom call. I think a lot of, from my experience, these things happen in months, over months and hours and hours and hours of pouring over details, small, minute details. So, you know, that's why it was important to me. That, and that's my thought. I think, yeah, the 20% failure rate in first year of business, I think we really got to go back to, you know, what's that planning process like for your team as well? Yeah, I like what you're saying, because, you know, when we go on social, it, it seems like it's get an idea and go straight to market. That's what yeah. it kind of looks like sometimes. And some of our favorite influencers, even though they keep telling us over and over, hey, it took me years to do this. I failed a number of times. 
the way things are cut together just looked like it was instant. And I think it it definitely gives people the wrong idea. Um, As a person who does business planning for small business, emerging small businesses and not-for-profits, I feel like it is something that a lot of people are starting to understand more that they need, but they still don't really understand, like you were saying, what is the process to get a business plan? They they heard it. They heard the words, but what is the actual process? Yeah. And I would even I would even contend this is an unscientific um, statement, but I would contend that there are more entrepreneurs who did not go to business school than there are that did go to business school. Hmm. And I'm, I'm saying that the going to business school or going to get a, you know, taking a business class, a certification class, just a course gives you some in-depth knowledge and science behind why people do what they do in business. And if you don't have that foundation, then you might be a little bit, um, you know, I don't even, you know, you might, you might be off a little bit in your expectations of what it was required to accomplish business success. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So you're saying that most people don't have an MBA that attempt to start a business and they don't really, a lot of times don't have any sort of set foundation to build from to start that business. That's my, that's, that's my assertion. I might, I haven't done any research. I don't know statistically, but that's what I'm led to believe. That's especially when you think about, and we talked about this in a previous episode that, and this is, this is a hard stat to fathom that 99.9% of all businesses in the United States are small businesses. 99.9% of all businesses in the United States are small businesses. Now, and that's according to the SBA. Now, the SBA also has different definitions of what they consider a small business. In in, In some industries, if you're doing $10 million or less, you're a small business. In other industries, if you're doing $100 million or less, you're a small business. If you have 100 employees or less in some industries, the SBA considers you a small business. And others, if you have 500 employees or less, you're considered a small business. So if you, you got to keep that in mind, that that's the definition according to the Small Business Administration or the SBA of a small business. So as we look in our neighborhoods, I don't care where you live, and you look at the businesses in your neighborhood, 99.9% of all of those businesses are small businesses. So that's how I get to the assumption that I would bet that a majority of the businesses, the entrepreneurs that are starting businesses I would bet that most of them don't have a formal education in business school. So they are missing that found those foundational principles when starting a business. Yeah, that's the interesting take. Let's grapple with that a little bit. So I would, I would assert that they don't need to go to business school. I actually think going to business school is more harmful than helpful when starting a business. Mm. I really believe that because when, typically when you go to business school, you are, and no knock against business schools. I mean, you know. We both have been there. We both have been there. You know, the one I went to is number two right now. It's, it's yeah. really good, but it's yeah. not, it, it wasn't designed for you to start a business. It was designed for you to insert yourself into a large corporation nine times out of 10. And I just think that's what they're for. 
the other thing you made another point and that's just my viewpoint i could be wrong but I, I haven't seen where people who went to business school have really that much of an advantage they usually have to go get a coach or some other type of educational journey yes. to get prepared properly yes the other thing is i'll say and i like what you said earlier and i wanted to add on to this is i do think people are have the knowledge they need to start the business depending like if you're leaning on what your expertise is, you have the knowledge and the business plan will just help you to organize some of what you already know. Mm. Just think mm. about it. The business plan is really mm. designed to start with what problem are you solving? Mm. And I've, I've worked with hundreds of entrepreneurs. Usually they're solving a problem that's based on their expertise, something that they went to school for something that they um, worked in a corporation for for many years. And so they got this knowledge base. They might be a psychiatrist and they're like, I want to open my own firm. They may be an engineer. Now they want to start their own thing. They're an attorney. They want to go and hang their own shingle. And so they already know the problem and how to solve it, but they just need an organized way to do it. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Here's the even stronger pain point that I believe um, lends to this conversation is that people articulating that why seems to be a really big challenge for entrepreneurs. Taking the idea out of their head and putting it into some sort of roadmap or formal term business plan so they can be clear about what it is that they're doing, right? So that's one. I think people have a hard, like if you say, well, why are you starting this business? I think people sometimes have a hard time in putting their why into the appropriate business language. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, for it to make sense, not only to themselves, but to others. I know, you know, I, I went I went through that for a long, long period of time. The other piece is like, why do you even need a business plan? Like, do you need a business plan? If I. And so that's the other question, like, do you need a business plan? Who needs a, does everybody need a business plan? E. Who needs a business plan? You know, I always get, I used to get irritated when I would hear that question because it's like, even if you, and I, and that's the whole episode, right? But it's like, even if you don't write it down and you say you look at your favorite influencer and you're like, you know what, I'm about to go, I'm going to about to go out here and do exactly what that person is doing from A to Z, just real quick. Even if you do that, you've got some kind of plan in your head. It might not, it just may not be written down or it might not be fleshed out well but you're operating out of some sort of plan, even if, even if it's just what you saw visually on social media. So I think when we say, do you need a business plan? It's kind of the wrong question. It's what type of business plan do you need? Mm. I, I, everybody, I don't, I would love somebody to come on here and debate us about this, but I, I don't think there's ever been an entrepreneur that started the business without some sort of plan. Now, whether it was good, bad or ugly, whatever, Still, they had some kind of scheme that they were going to use to create this business. I had a conversation with a gentleman just um, two days ago who, you know, pretty much said that they have a colleague. They know someone who runs a four million dollar operation with no business plan. And I made that same um, rebuttal that you made that I believe if I find it hard pressed that they don't have some sort of written idea of what it is that they're doing. At $4 million, I just believe, and I could be wrong, that they have some semblance of a plan, which led to the next, which, which led to another point about, yeah, you don't need a plan, but what you do need is a, a, a an operational strategy, a, a, a way to operate or execute or implement the plan. So I like what you just said, though, 
It's like, what type of plan do you need? And then, and I brought up this question, like, do you need a traditional standard business plan with an executive summary and statement of the problem, statement of the solution, market analysis, SWOT analysis, you know, go to market strategy, financial projections, which is a big one. Do you need three year, one year, three year, five year, seven year financial projections in that plan? Like, um, and so my argument, of course, is obviously, and you probably have this, I may be jumping the gun a little bit. Uh, I believe that is great value and benefit in having um, a, a traditional formal business plan for two reasons. One, if you plan on getting funding, if you want people to invest in your business in any capacity, I think you need, you know, number one question I think that most folks are going to ask you is, do you have a plan? Can I see your plan? Can you, can, can you send me your plan? The other piece is, even if you have no idea, no plan of getting funded, I believe that at least you need some sort of treasure map, roadmap for what it is that you just want to do. Now, maybe you don't need the executive summary. Maybe you don't need seven-year, five-year sales projections. Maybe you don't even need a SWOT analysis. But I think you do need at least the skeletons, the core, in a written form. Um, at the very least, E, if something were to happen to you, do you have a document of what you were intending to do so it can continue to live? And I might be pushing a little bit, but that's why I'm landing on this issue. I like that. Now you're talking about estate planning type stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I like what you. I like everything that you just said, and I think that opens the door for us to define what is a business plan. What is it actually? I think we've talked around it. But hey, if you're just tuning in, this is the Money Sex Gen X podcast. I'm yeah. rocking with my main man, Big Stu. We whoa, are on whoa, season whoa. seven. Season seven, episode. For, and you know what, you all, we're glad that you're still rocking with us. We shortened up our format a little bit. We're trying to get that same energy, so we're, we're getting it together. But thank you so much for having this conversation with us today about business plan. Stu, they say, and I always like to say they, uh, business plan is a comprehensive document that outlines your business's objectives, strategies, financial pro projections, et cetera, the things that you just talked about. It's a roadmap that guides your business's growth. Yeah. Now, I was I probably would have disagreed with you that you need a written version of it until you just said, well, hey, what if you pass away? How would the people left behind in your basically your succession, your success? How would they know what you intended if it was all in your head? Oh, yeah. And the answer is they wouldn't know. They would not yeah. know. Yeah. So, yeah. OK. I like that. Um, after Now, you and I have worked with a lot of different entrepreneurs on business planning. It's not the core of what we do, but it's, right. you know, it's a piece of what we do to work with other people. If you were to say, like, what are, you kind of said this, but like, if you were to just pick one section that a person or one component that a person must have, they might say, Stu, I don't really want to do a whole plan. I just want to do an abbreviated thing. What would you say is a must? Give me like one or two things that have to be in there. Operations, operational plan. Operational plan. Operational plan. Okay. Forget all the other stuff. Forget the executive summary. Forget the research. How are you going to operate this thing? Like, and this is actually what I teach when I'm teaching entrepreneurship, as a matter of fact, as contradictory as this statement is about to be, when I'm teaching entrepreneurship, I don't even teach the business plan first. You know what I teach first, E? What's that? Get your first customer. 
Show me how you operate. What is your plan to get your first dollar? Okay. Show me that. Let me, let me, give me that first. Before we even get to the plan, can you get a dollar for this offering of yours? And then uh -huh. from there, we determine if we even, if it's even viable to do a business plan. Okay. And I also believe that from that first activity, it will help create the plan. And it's very, it's an oxymoron because ultimately what I'm saying is forget about the plan. Let's run the business. <laughs> right. <laughs> but but I'm also need. back. I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, if you can't figure out how to operate this thing, the plan won't matter. If you okay. can't figure out how to get a dollar out of a customer, how to sell, what you would say, how you would deliver, what your packaging look like, looks like, where do you go to source this thing, what's the cost, what is your price? If you can't do it one time, the business plan ain't going to help you. So it's, it's the operational plan for me. Y'all hear that? This is coming from a stone cold entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur, by the way. And we're going to get into one of his businesses that is extremely relevant uh, here in a few minutes. Uh, but I wanted to weigh in on that. I like that. That makes sense to me. And then for me, I would say, what if you had to just choose one thing? I would say the market research. Mm. Now, I got a, a very different view of market research. We view it as being all, you know, running a bunch of reports and all that. But really, what it is is you saying, you know what? I want to solve this problem for X group of people. I'm going to go to them and ask them how they want the problem solved and do they actually want this problem solved, mm -hmm. right? So say I'm developing a new blazer for men that are 6'6 in height or taller, right? And the problem is they don't they have problems finding fly blazers that fit well because their arms are very long and et cetera, et cetera, right? I go straight to market without talking to any of these people. I don't know how many of those people are out there. I don't know what the problem, I think I know what the problem is, but I haven't spoken to anybody to know for sure. I would encourage anybody listening to this pod today, don't discount talking to the people you say you want to solve the problem for, because I guarantee you, they're going to give you some feedback that you were not thinking about. I guarantee it. Please do that. And the other thing I would say is this isn't necessarily something to have in the plan per se, but it's just a mentality. Don't be afraid to niche down. I, I know this was a big sticking point for me as an early entrepreneur. Don't be afraid to niche down. What do you mean by that? Far what is niche down? Good question. So niching down is, so like I'm in the financial um, field. I'm a financial advisor. If I just say, I'm a financial advisor for everybody. Okay. You want to work with me, Stu? Yeah. Okay. I can do that. I did it. Yeah. But you're going to have different results than if you say, Stu, you know what? I'm a, a financial coach that works with six-figure earners. Yeah. You see how much more specific that is? It's a coach versus an advisor. I'm working with primarily black six-figure earners. So now when I go do my market research, I know exactly who to go to. If you're not in that bucket of people, there's no point in me talking to you if that's who I'm doing the business for. And then I'm going to get feedback directly from that group of people. And that informs how I do my marketing. And if I do decide to do a business plan, it gives me a great frame to operate in. I'm getting feedback directly from people like Big Stu to run my business. Hey, you all are hearing from someone who has helped people go from zero, go from idea to millions of dollars time and time again. I have personally nicknamed Eric McLeod the financial whisperer. This guy <laughs> is a genius Thank when you, it sir. comes to how you engage with money and attract it to your business. So listen, 
to this financial guru. He knows what he's talking about. And I also want to just say, Eric, <coughs> excuse me. I want to believe that we use different uh, lenses on the, our one thing. And also, for whatever reason, just want to say it's we're, we're almost saying the exact same thing. Because to me, going out and getting that first dollar is your research. You got to figure out who is willing to buy. Um, I feel like your approach with like figuring out how they want the solution delivered to them. Steve Jobs keeps coming to mind when I think about that, because a lot of times I do believe that customers, consumers don't really know the answer to that question. And that was Steve Jobs approach when he created the iPod for those who are old enough to remember the iPod before most people consumers didn't know that they would could benefit from the solution of having one device for their music and photos and phone calls and meetings and calendar and email i don't think they could have articulated that but duly noted you do need to talk to your customers to see if they even want what you're offering. I agree with that 100%. Yeah, and I guess you could talk to them like using the Steve Jobs example. You can observe them and you can talk to them about just what's going on in their lives. To, if you're like, I don't know what I want to offer yet. Let me just talk to some people and see what comes back. I've gotten some really good ideas like that, just talking to people, no specifics in mind, just kind of talking and like, oh man, that's an issue for you. I didn't know that. Okay. And then you go to the next one. Oh, that's an issue for you too. And sometimes those problem statements come together like that. Okay. So now let's do this real quick. I know we're running out of time, but we want to just talk about quickly what's typically in a business plan. And Stu laid a lot of this out earlier, but yeah, you got your problem statement. Usually there's an executive summary. It's kind of an overview. That's what you're going to write to get people interested, to keep reading. Uh, you got the marketing section, of course financing. I used to, I like to include an innovation section. So it's like, mm. you're not the only person solving this problem. How are you going to solve it differently? Mm -hmm. Right. So innovation, uh, legal, you might be, you might have some legal concerns that need to be addressed. Um, who's on your team. Mm -hmm. We haven't talked mm -hmm. enough about that. So you can have the best problem to solve in the world. You can have the people, but if you don't have the team, it's kind of hard to move forward. Yeah, I agree. I agree. 100%. Anything that I missed that you would want in a business plan? Um, what's your Oh, wow, unbelievable. I talk about this all the time. What's your exit strategy? What's your exit strategy? Exit Go. strategy. That's okay. important. Super 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 important. How would, you know, what's what's your next level? Are you willing to sell? You know, what's your retirement plan for your business? Are you going to pass it down? Are you going to liquidate? You know, so how, how are you planning on getting out of the business? And I think elect, a lot of entrepreneurs, particularly those that are like me, um, we don't think about getting out of our business. We think of our businesses as our sole only income. And this is what we'll hold on to for dear life for generations. And even if you're thinking about holding on to it for generations, that's an exit strategy. You got to be able to pass it down. You use the term succession plan. So I think that's also important. Love it. That's the generational wealth conversation. Yeah. All right. So Big Stu is always on the cutting edge of technology. Yeah, yeah. He actually has yeah. a business plan development. Don't and I might be using the wrong word by saying software, but you'll tell us the details. But it's it's a software a company, okay? A company called Planet AI, right? That's the name. Yeah. Yeah. It is there to do what for us, Big Stu? Help you create that business plan in minutes, not months. If Ooh, you I, have an idea, a what come on, tagline. man. Create a business plan in minutes. Wow. Not months. You answer these eight questions. You put it into our prompt. You go to planet, P-L-A-N-N-I-T dot 
AI, answer the eight prompts. Okay. And in minutes, you will have a full comprehensive business plan that you can use to go to market. Now, Love it. the more detailed your inputs, the better your output will be. Okay. And so there it is. Planet.ai. Create, make this process simple for yourself. Don't cheat yourself, e-money. What? Treat yourself. I love it. Minutes, not months. I don't think I'll ever forget that. That's a that's one of the dopest. Not a dope isn't even the right word. It's one of the most appropriate yeah. tagline. Because I actually signed up for Planet AI before this pod this morning. And I was putting in some joints about a car wash. Mm. I want to start a car wash in rural areas and all that. And it's, you know, in minutes, I got a nice foundation. Now, like you said, I would have got an even stronger one if I had been more specific. And then there were options to build other layers onto that plan. Absolutely. Super dope. Because, again, that would have took a lot of time to get the, the old school way. I you like know what it. I'm going to do for you, E Money? What's that? I'm going to give you a promo code. Okay. For you to unlock the premium for free. Okay. So you can get the comprehensive full plan and play with it yourself. I didn't know that you would you had done that, but I'm going to oh. give you a promo code. And for the first five people that respond. Get started in our comments. Get started. I'm going to give them a discount code. Okay. For the software. Very gracious of you, brother. But I actually have an ask from you that's a little bigger than that. Come on, let's go. Let's bring it on. Let's do it. I appreciate that. But what I want to do, I want to be an affiliate. Oh. I want to be an affiliate. You know, look at you this, y'all. This is happening in real time. For a software like this, I want to help. Introduce this into the marketplace. Can wow. we do that? Absolutely, we can, E Money. Right? I love it. I love it. Yeah, I'm. I'm in there. I'm like, wait a minute. I want to be a social. I want to be part of this. So yeah, okay. I appreciate that. I would like to be an affiliate. Um, that way, I can offer it to people who come to me. I have people who come to me. They don't. Sometimes people don't have the time to do the old school way, or they don't want to, or they can't, or whatever. This is a great solution. But even if we do do it the old school way, this is a great way to get a foundation faster. Absolutely. So, yeah, I love that. Absolutely. That. All right, great sir. So, Thank you, sir. so planetai.com, right? Planet.ai. Planet.ai. That's .com? it. P L A N N I T. P L A N N I T. Dot AI. Gotcha. And I saw you all have an IG uh, channel already. IG, uh, you're on IG. What other Planet platforms? AI. What other platforms are you on? Facebook, Facebook Planet AI. Okay. Twitter LinkedIn. or X, Planet AI. LinkedIn, gotcha. Planet AI. Love it. Love it. Okay. Threads. Planet okay. AI. Easy to find and easy to use. So let's wrap this up. Any concluding thoughts that you have about business plans? You introduce your software. What else do you want to tell us as we close out here? I think you need a business plan. If you're thinking about starting a business, get your ideas out of your head and put them on paper somewhere. It cannot hurt. And I'm not just saying this because of the software. I'm saying this because I've been doing this for 20 plus years. I don't see it going anywhere. Take the time. Be patient. Get the ideas out of your head, put them on paper and use it as keep in mind, the business plan is never, ever, 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 ever done. There is no done business plan, but get it out of your head, put it on paper and continue to be open to innovation, as e-money would say, or iterating your plan. Keep it moving. But you got to have a plan in my most humblest, humblest opinion. All right. I love it. My final take on this is. You already have a plan. I just want you to write it down. Wow. You already have a plan. I want you to write it down. I want you to use um, tools like Planet AI to flesh it out better. 
but you're operating out of some type of plan. Let's make some better plans so we can get to this generational wealth. Because we're at this thing now in our history, especially in Black culture, it's not enough to just be an entrepreneur. We're doing that now. We're out here. Now we need these businesses that can last so our children can pick them up and run them. As Stu said, if you don't do it for any other reason than to give instructions to your children yeah. on how to run your company if you are no longer around. So yeah. let's do that. Let's do it. Great job. All right. Thank you, sir. This has been another great episode of the Money, Sex, Gen X podcast. We will talk to you all soon. But in the meantime, peace. Peace.